We've just gotten this breaking news, and I'm going to read it because I don't want to get this wrong. It's extraordinarily important, but the president, as we mentioned, is speaking right now at the White House. We're waiting for the tape turnaround. He's at the Customs and Border Roundtable at the moment, and there is a flash on the wires. Here it is. President Trump says an immigration deal, this would involve the DACAs, the so-called DREAMers, by March 5th could very well not happen. Let's bring in former ambassador to Belgium, former special assistant to the FBI director, Bill Webster, that's Howard Gutman, as well as former Senate Foreign Relations Committee chief counsel and senior advisor, Jamil Jaffer. Um, this thrown into what we've already seen as a very tough uh, group of cross currents on the markets right now, and we're watching the Dow go back down to session lows. We're down 611 right now. Howard, I'll turn to you first. Um, <laughs> you got the FISA memo. You've got this now where President Trump is saying, forget the March 5th deadline. We know that there's a budget. We know there's a debt ceiling we're about to hit. We know the country runs out of money. Which one needs to get dealt with first? Well, I think they, they um, work together to create this hysteria that is day to day and probably well overblown. I've read the Nunes memo and what that's about is about people on Capitol Hill not understanding FISA applications. You know, it's much ado about nothing, the Nunes memo. It came out and said, you know, no one told any good news in the uh, application about Carter Page, all his good things. And, you know, um, in that application, they didn't tell all the negative credibility issues about the dossier. Well, in the hundreds of FISA memos I reviewed, you never told credibility issues. This wasn't a final argument at trial. It reads like a pretty straightforward FISA application. The president blows it up. The press blows it up. Well, wait a minute. You were at the FBI. You were special assistant to the FBI director. It can't look good if the FBI is using information from somebody who is clearly biased against one candidate for the presidency versus another. And, and that's pretty much proven. What does the FBI have to do to get some trust and credibility back? Liz, in every Pfizer application, the FBI is using information from informants who have access to grind, from unreliable sources. If what you had was priests and nuns coming forward to testify uh, for a FISA application, you would grant none. Can you imagine today if we are, and we are, watching American citizens who are viewed to be Iranian agents, and we're saying, you know, those applications didn't say the good parts of them, or they didn't disclose the biases of the witnesses. Mm -hmm. That Pfizer application was approved by five separate senior FBI people, including one who's one of the president's favorites. Um, and so that's business as usual. Okay, let me jump to Jamil. Jamil, you, of course, were at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and you're the chief counsel there. Uh, I'm guessing you know pretty much how these things are supposed to work. But also, look at the markets right now. As a business network, we're watching at least a corner of this downdraft attributed to the concern going on inside the Beltway about this. Well, Liz, it's a real problem. I mean, here's the issue, right? When it comes to intelligence, you want bipartisanship. You want the majority and the minority to work together and figure this thing out and give the American people an assessment of what happened, right? That didn't happen here. Fine. Then you might have dueling memos where you've got the Democrats and Republicans saying their point of view. That didn't happen here either. Instead, what you have is just a Republican memo that's clearly got one point of view. Now, whether you agree with that point of view or not, and if, even if you're concerned about FBI malfeasance or DOJ malfeasance, which we don't know about, but maybe a problem, you want it to be done in a fair way where the issues are presented evenly, and that didn't happen here, and that's what's got people freaked out and got the markets down, and that's catastrophic for the country. Yeah, I, I think freak out is a, is a good word, although, again, when you look at a 10-year chart, it looks like the complete opposite of what we're seeing right here. So, yes, this, this does add nervousness, no doubt, of what's going on with the markets. Uh, Howard Gutman, Jamil Jaffer, we thank you.